Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're back fixing another gun, this time an M700 that I picked up on the streets of Tarkov. I spawned in around the crashed train and decided to see if we could get a cheeky kill at the start from any players taking a position around the theatre, and sure enough, an opportunity arose. We'll wait for like another 30 seconds maybe, and then we'll go to... Ooh, good night. I went over to loot the body and picked up this guy, which looks to me like it could do with a bit of refurbishment. Okay, so now we've got our hands on this M700, what exactly do I think is wrong with this gun? Well, the M700 can be built more modularly than most of the others, and it can be extremely powerful. But the issue is, is that typically there's two things that you really need to consider when you're making a bolt action, and that is the ergonomics and the weight. The recoil really doesn't matter anywhere near as much as with other weapons, because obviously you're only firing one bullet at a time. It can make a little bit of a difference when you hold down left click. So when you fire, the gun shakes with recoil and you can see where your bullet goes. And then when you let go, then you rack the bolt and rack another round in. So that can help you sort of see where your shot actually landed, especially if you're firing over a long distance. But you don't need that lower recoil to still be able to see through the sight. So on that basis, we really want to prioritize either weight or ergonomics or maybe even a blend of the two. But the problem with this gun is that it doesn't really do either. 6.6 .6 kilograms is pretty heavy for an M700, to be honest, and 32 ergonomics is also quite low. This is using the Mod X components, which typically are quite high ergo, and at least you can get the ergonomics pretty decent on this if you build it right. But this one's down at 32, which means the ADS speed is going to be quite low because ergonomics primarily dictates ADS speed, as in how long it takes to raise the gun and be looking through the sight, which particularly affects this kind of optic where you have to look through and the screen is basically black while the optic is like moving in front of your PMC's eye. Weight, on the other hand, affects how long you can actually physically hold it up for. So it really depends on how you want to use it. If you're running around and playing very actively and changing position and you need to be able to bring the weapon up really quickly, you probably want to prioritize ergonomics. If you are mainly staying stationary, using a lot of concealment to not be seen, and you're holding ADS for a long time, so I don't know, out of a window or something, then you probably want lower weight. So it really depends on how you're trying to use the bolt action as to how you want to build it. So as I said, this one kind of has the worst of both. It has high weight and it has low ergonomics. So I think to begin with, let's just focus on the weight build because weight is actually quite easy to fix relatively and you don't get that much ergonomics for it. But if you want to be able to hold ADS for a long time, then this is the way you do it. So what we'll do is instead of using the Mod X, we're actually going to swap out the entire chassis for this, the AICS M700. So you can buy this just from the flea market most of the time. People usually putting it up around the same price as the traders, so you don't need to get high levels of mechanic in order to do this one. And when you do this, the benefit is that it is actually very light in and of itself. It's only 0.64 kilos, and it also comes with the pistol grip and the stock as well, which is one of the main reasons why it ends up making the weapon so light. As you can see, we've already shaved off a huge amount of weight. We're now at 4.5 kilograms instead, which makes a very big difference. As well as changing the amount of stamina that you have to hold the gun up, one other thing that I would like to point out about weight is the overswing factor, which I've talked about previously. Obviously, when we've looked at guns like the SVD, a lot of heavy guns have this kind of issue, especially when you're using longer range scopes, where when you aim down sights, you get this overswing effect on the reticle because of the weapon's weight. It's primarily weight, but it's also affected by ergonomics a little bit as well. A community member of mine, Space Monkey, did actually create a calculator that I'll link to down below where you can put in the weapon's weight and its ergonomics. And this was based all in terms of in-raid testing. So this should work pretty much for every weapon that you want to put into it, and it'll dictate the point at which the overswing occurs. There's a very binary change between overswing happening and it not happening at all. So this is one thing that we get away from when we move our weight down from 6.6 .6 kilos down to 4.5. The next part in terms of weight is the suppressor. The SDN is not bad for recoil, but as we said, we don't really care about this. And it's quite a heavy combination of muzzle brake and suppressor at 0.689. Now, if I'm trying to focus on weight, typically the one that I will use is the Thunder Beast. The Thunder Beast is the lightest that you can get. And what you want to do is add the Thunder Beast Arms 30 CB muzzle brake and onto that the Ultra 5. You can see the total for this is 0.319, which is a lot less, it's about half the other one. So now we're down at 4.133 in terms of weight, which is getting really quite low. The final part for this particular gun is the magazine. This magazine, the 10 round AI AICS, these are very, very heavy. And there's a much better one that you can use, which is also 10 rounds, which is this one, the PMAG, which is only 0.12. Now this isn't quite fair because this has 10 bullets loaded into it. If we go into my character screen, I did actually make all of these weapons so we can see directly what the difference is. 
we look at the 10 rounder full of M80 here. This is 0.74 loaded. And this guy is 0.63 fully loaded. So again, it's about half of the weight. So I'm actually just going to go back into the preset here that I made. I tried to simulate exactly what they had done with their build. So they had a laser on and I did change over the mount because I was building this completely from scratch. But otherwise, the gun is basically the same. So what we've changed is the stock. We've changed the magazine and we have changed the muzzle brake. And now we've got to 3.888 in terms of weight. This is like nearly half of what it was before. And this is crazy. This will have a huge impact on arm stamina if you want to be light and versatile with the weapon and allow you to ADS quicker. Now, as I said, ergonomics does affect your ADS speed and weight has a small impact, but it doesn't do anywhere near as much as ergo does. And the issue here with this particular gun is that we've gone from 22 frames on the original build that we were trying to fix only down to 20 frames. So in terms of ADS speed, it's not actually that much different because with this AICS, because you don't have the advantages of being able to put on your own pistol grip, you don't have the advantages of being able to add your own stock. The ergonomics is only 30 here on this build. We get a small two frame increase in ADS speed due to the weight itself. But other than that, we don't really get much benefit. So let's move back to the initial build and we're going to look at the ergo version this time. And this is usually where the M700 sings in terms of bolt actions because it can really get to high levels of ergonomics. What we're going to do to start with is take these two rails off because these are unnecessary, which I should have done on the other build. And now we're going to remove the SE5. The SE5 is a really nice bang for buck combination of recoil and ergonomics for most normal guns, but we don't really care about recoil, as I said. And so we can actually just bypass the rail. This thing is key mod anyway. And this allows us to add this thing, which is the highest ergonomic foregrip in the entire game. And this only fits on very certain handguards. It's called the MVF001. EMOD vertical foregrip in black and this has 10 ergo and no recoil but for this particular gun we don't care so we're just going to stick that on and get our two ergonomics over the SE5 it's also pretty cheap next given that we're focusing on ergonomics we're also going to change the suppressor again I think the SDN6 is quite good on recoil but we don't really care and it's pretty bad on ergo and heavy too as we saw a second ago the best suppressor for ergonomics is still the hybrid this one the hybrid 46 we add the direct thread mount adapter and we put the hybrid 46 on top don't forget that the Hybrid 46, don't pay 100k on the flea market. You can buy this using four sticks of RAM. This tends to make it about 40k instead. This one we use in Gunsmith all the time. So a lot of people are pretty aware of that barter, especially if you watch my videos pretty regularly. But this thing as a combination has the lowest ergo decrease for all of the suppressors that you can actually attach to the M700. So that one can go on there. Another one is the Wave is quite a good one as well that has one less ergonomics than the Hybrid. But if you're looking at purely ergonomics, the Hybrid is the way to go. After this, this stock combination is particularly bad, actually, like a Colt A2, the PRS Gen 2. This is normally seen as a budget recoil reducing stock, which is just completely unnecessary on this particular gun. So you could do something like advanced tube, combine it with a GL core. But what we're going to do is take it to its extreme, which is using the Viper PDW. Now, I've used this one before as a little bit of a meme stock on the SVD, but it is very good in terms of ergonomics. You do lose a lot of recoil because of it. But again, we don't really care on this particular gun. We've still got 123 recoil versus 90 which I'll show you in a moment when we're firing it. You can still see your target through the Valde, which may be something to do with the new recoil system as well because scopes don't black out to anymore. So you don't need lots of recoil reduction on a Bolti to be able to see your target after you fired. The final part, again, we're just going to swap over the magazine. This one has more ergonomics anyway. If you really want to min-max it, you can go for something like the five rounder if you really are desperate to get those last few bits of ergonomics. But I don't really think that that's worth it, honestly. I'd rather have like 10 bullets to go rather than an extra five ergo and only having five rounds. I mean, that's completely up to you it's quite quick to reload and you only fire one bullet at a time so it's fine but I prefer having 10 knowing that I'm not just going to go click when I'm on the perfect headshot I'm going to leave it on the 10 rounder like we did before so I'm going to go to the full build for this which is the ergo one make sure we've got everything on it including the laser and I have also added the defiance front and rears as well which are kind of optional they only give one ergonomics each so you may or may not decide whether that's worth it and the pistol grip I've changed over to the Orion there is technically one better grip which is the st2 pc but this one has 13 ergo versus the orion's 12. these two are able to be bought from the traders whereas this one is fleet only so you can see it's like 40k so i don't know whether that's really worthwhile right the orion instead is like 15,000 from here so yeah if you're buying from the flea market you might want to just go for the yellow grip but if you have access to it on skier you probably just want to go for that on him 
We're keeping on the Valde, and this gets us to 66 ergonomics and 123 vertical recoil. So this is really, really good for ADS speed. When I went to go and test this one, remember the original one had 22 frames of ADS speed. The M700 with the weight modifications had 20 frames, and this one is 13. So it is nearly double the speed of the original M700 that we had in terms of ADS speed. And the stamina drain will be lower as well, because the overall weight of the gun is 5.6 kilograms now rather than 6.6. So this is better on both aspects. Aspects. Now, there was one other build that I wanted to do sort of as a combination between the two of these if you didn't want to sacrifice so much of all the bits. This is kind of like a middle ground. This is quite expensive in terms of presets. What I did here is change over the stock to the ARE and the MOE because we don't really need a much more ergo than this. We're still out of the overswing territory and this was kind of the idea. We're going to keep out of overswing territory. I'm going to keep the ADS speed kind of high. We're also reducing the vertical recoil so that we get minimal bounce and also keep the weight quite low. So this one at 5.1 kilograms is actually pretty pretty good with 47 ergo and 90 vertical recoil this guy has 16 frames ads speed rather than 13 of the fully ergo optimized one which isn't too bad at all lowish recoil and the weight is also a little bit lower as well with 5.16 but the arm stamina is a little bit better now one thing that I want to point out about the arm stamina thing is that you may not feel that it's necessarily worth sacrificing a lot of ergonomics for that arm stamina because for example if we just input the numbers into the calculator we can see the original version of this build which was 6.6 .6 kilos with 32 ergo this was in the overswing territory but also within arm stamina you only got 23 seconds now if we move to the fully weight optimized version with under four kilos of weight and 30 ergo this now moves to 30 and a half and I'm using strength of level 15 or something here because this is kind of like an average of where somebody might be you might be a little bit lower a little bit higher and that's going to impact it a little bit so somebody with zero strength rather than having 30 and a half seconds of arm stamina they'll have 29 instead and somebody with 30 strength they'll have 32 seconds rather than 30 and a half so it kind of moves around a little bit depending on your strength level but at level 15 strength you're talking about 23 seconds versus 30 seconds on arm stamina this optimized build that we've looked at here with 5.1 weight and 47 ergo this one gets to 27 seconds of arm stamina so somewhere in the middle so you might decide well i don't really need that extra three seconds or so of arm stamina by going all the way on the weight angle and i want to take some better ads speed instead so i think that this combined build is honestly not that bad we're going with the thunder beast and the mod x chassis but this time we're using an rvg and also the are and the moe fde instead so you could tweak this build depending on what you want to do you could move this more into ergonomics by using something like the viper or the daniel's defense up here so i think this build overall is pretty balanced it's probably the most expensive of all the builds but it gives you close to the best ads speed that you can and also some relatively good arm stamina too so so these are kind of your options either full ergo for ads speed full weight for arm stamina or a blend of the two to get 50 to 75 percent of the weight on both metrics depending on what you prioritize so just before we go, I do want to remind you that I do have a podcast called Scav Talk that I run with my co-host Church, where we talk about Tarkov every week. We go live on Friday and we post the videos on Monday on YouTube and all the other platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well. So if you want to check us out, then feel free. Otherwise, as always, a big shout out to all my patrons and as usual, have fun in your raids.